Hey, hey, hey. Camera Ray. Watching Camera Camera Ray. Oh my. On Camera Hello. Ray. Music TV. Are you listening to me? So enjoy yourself. This girl is always I singing. So enjoy yourself. Hello. Camera Ray. Come on. It's time to start the show. Oh. <laughs> Hey guys, what's up? It's your girl Kim Ray, and I'm back with another episode of this podcast. Hashtag JTFIO or just trying to figure it out. I'm your host, Kim Ray. Did I already say that? <laughs> and the brand is Kim Ray Music TV. And this is part two for your two episodes for this week. The first one was about um, Amber Geiger and the Botham Jean case and all about forgiveness and the whole plight of black forgiveness and that whole talk about all that. So make sure you go check that out. This is part two about relationship over religion. So if you are new here, make sure you subscribe if you're watching on YouTube, follow, download the podcast episodes, comment down below on any of these um, platforms that you're on, rate the podcast, do, do, just do it all. Just do it all. We are on um, Instagram at JTFIO podcast, thinking about starting a Twitter just because it's like you got to have all these handles on all platforms to get any type of engagement or any type of um, exposure. It's crazy. <sighs> all right. So we are going to dive into this topic about relationship over religion. I'm super duper, super duper. I know I say super duper every week, but I am super duper passionate about this because it took me a while to realize that this was the wave that I was on. But once I got on the wave, I ain't stopped. I ain't going back at I ain't never stopping. I ain't never going back. All right. So what we're talking about here is religion today. So if you are somebody who is touchy feely, you get sensitive about it, just just turn it off. Just turn it off. I need listeners. I need an audience. I need all that. But I don't need it so bad that I want you to force yourself to listen to something that you're not going to agree with or that you're going to have a problem with. All right. But if you are still here, welcome. Thank you for staying. Um, if you're open minded, let's move forward. Let's let's go. OK, so as a child at 12 years old, I used to um, I learned. Let me see. I got saved probably like seven or eight years old. Around 10 years old, you know, I start going to this mega church. You know, we were learning how to pray and speak to God and speak in tongues and, you know, pray over other children. So by 12, I was in the children's church praying over other children. I was singing a lot in the choirs and I noticed that I had a calling on my life and anointing on my life to reach out to others. So I was singing with my uncle slash cousin slash cousin slash uncle. He would do the revivals. He would preach. I would get up and sing before him. He would preach. We would tag team, do that thing. Right. And I realized I had a calling and I was so much about my Christianity. Um, but my home church was, you know, Christian, but it was its own, you know, there's all these other there's CME, there's Kojic, there's all these other things. Right. So I realized my home church was not non-denominational. It was not non-denominational. And then churches that I was growing up going to were non-denominational. Um, not until I became an adult did I realize, oh, there's denominations, there are rules and ways that people function under certain religions. You know, if you're Catholic, you do this. If you're Muslim, you do that. If you're atheist, you do this. If you're um, not a denominational Christian, if you're Protestant, if you're Kojic, if you, you know, I realize there's all of these rules. And this is where I started to get a little confused because I was like, are these religions in the Bible? How are we deciding who is Buddha? Who is Allah? Who is, who is, who is? Who is all these people? How are we deciding who is right? 
how are we breaking down and teaching, you know, a child who comes home one day and is just like, who is God? What is God? Um, or who is in children's church and has all these questions because growing up, it was just looked at as you don't, you don't even fix your mouth to ask these questions because you're just wrong. But kids now are so inquisitive that you got to have an answer for the answer for the answer. You better be able to have a source to back it up. Right. So, um, kids are not just taking because I said so anymore. They need a little bit more clarification, which is a plus, honestly, because like I said, back in the day, we were just being told this is the way it is. And I think it's because our elders were told that, um, or because we needed to stay in a child's place. But, um, as time went on, I started realizing like, I don't really subscribe to my religion like that. I have a problem with a lot of these things in religion. I have a problem with sitting people down because, you know, they got pregnant as a teenager. So now they can't participate in all these other auxiliaries. Um, So you kind of cast them out and you don't create anything else for them to be involved with. Now they're out of the church. And it's like, what were, were you trying to push them away for? You know, the mistake was not in the child. It's like if you're supposed to be a church and a church is supposed to be raising up people and forgiving people and showing people how to live right. Why are we pushing people out when they make a mistake um, or, you know, when they do something that doesn't directly align with what's in the Bible? Because the mistake is not in the child. It's, you know, in getting pregnant or whatever, but it's not the child's not going to go away. So how are you going to teach this person how to be resilient and move forward? This is when I started to have a problem because I started to have friends and know of people who were being sat down and pushed out because of a decision that they made. Right. And, um, you know, the consequences happened and it was just like, okay, where are my mentors? Where are people that I can turn to? Why am I being pushed down and sat down because of this? So because of that, it just kind of made me feel like, okay. So I started to have, so I really started to have a problem with, you know, what I was seeing when it came to religion. And I thought that it meant I had a problem with my relationship and my relationship was intact. It was just like, okay, these things happening in the church, I have an issue. The gossip, the um, the jealousy, the, like the whole thing with status and oh, I just, you know, the seniority and the all, all of these things that I'm pretty sure were not in the Bible anywhere, but somebody decided somewhere this is how it's going to go. And we just started adapting it in, in, in churches everywhere. Right. So I don't really know who, who decided on religions, but I do believe that as Americans, as a country period, we are super duper for some reason into, um, always creating categories and grouping people and you go with them and you go with them and you do that and you do that and you guys like blue okay you're over here but you like teal so you're over here you like sky blue you like baby blue okay pretty close but still different okay let's break this up right so people are into being a part of something period and every people are going to find something somewhere that they can belong to if you're an atheist you're going to find an atheist group right it's just kind of what we do as um, human beings. Um, but I guess where I started to realize, um, where I started to realize all oh, religion and relationship have a division is when I went to Clayton State University. I think it was my freshman or sophomore year was a part of Kingdom Campus Ministries where Brian Meadows had started this thing where we were meeting up for Bible study and I was doing, you know, I had uh, Jacob's generation and we were praise dancing. We had a praise team and you like we're full, full out having church on campus um, and had the gospel choir. And I you know, he used to teach and preach and I would realize like, oh, these are two different things. And oh, like I, I like the non-denominational church because we are not doing religious practices and it is all about the relationship. Oh, I like my, you know, this church because, um, there are religious practices that I don't have a problem with. And, you know, these are significant to me when I look at, you know, the church or whatever. So it started to challenge 
or how I felt about church period and about God period. When I started to, you know, when I ended up getting out of school and going to community college and then moving to California and starting a whole nother school and at another community college and then moving on to another university and changing my major. Yes, I've had a journey. Don't be judging me. Um, when I started to do all that, um, I would I met people who were like sold out Christians and they were my age. It wasn't just like I grew up in the church. So that's why I'm a Christian. Um, it was I am the same age as you or a couple years younger. And I read my Bible every day. And I I really believe this stuff. And I love the Lord. And so when I saw that, I just was like, well, how do you like I love God. You don't love God. But how do you uh like how do you know like this love that that she would express was like this like like it was a good boyfriend, a good husband type of thing. And so when I realized like the differentiation between the type of loves that we were talking about, I wanted that, but I didn't quite know how to get to it because she wasn't partying like that, she wasn't drinking like that, she wasn't cussing like that, and I was. And so I was out here and, you know, she was kind of like the angel on my shoulder that would be like, ah, oh, you don't need to be doing such and such and such and such. Uh, <laughs> just so you know, now she's out there, she's doing her thing. And, you know, we realized like we had more in common than we thought. She got out the house. She realized like, oh, OK, this this is not just something you're not just out here backsliding like you really are just out here living your life. Right. But I started to realize um you know, God is there for you more than just when you're in the church pews. Like he is with you even in your lowest of moments. And when I started to look at it like that, I'm going to tell you one of the, the hugest turning points in my life. I was driving down to Huntington Beach in the middle of the night because I had a flight to catch and because I had told myself I didn't even want to deal with stuff so I'm gonna leave the last possible minute I have a problem with um you know thinking I'm gonna oversleep so I'll just stay up and because of this happening in my life I've tried to like learn to give myself more time to sleep but anyway um I that particular night I hadn't got any sleep Huntington Beach was about an hour drive hour and a half drive I figured I could just you know straight shot it I'd be good I'll sleep on the plane I'm good uh I get off on the exit start to get a little tired so I call my friend and um she's talking to me I think it's like one or two in the morning she's talking to me and um even to this day if I get tired I stop I get coffee I get a Mountain Dew, I get a Red Bull, I get something because this incident was like the turning point in my life. So she's talking and talking and I start to fall asleep and I fall asleep. And when I wake up, the car is upside down. Um... The windshield wipers are going. The music is still playing. Drake headlines to this day. Still, the song still gives me chills. Um, The song is playing. I'm in like immediate shock. And so uh, my friend is saying, Cam, Cam, are you there? Are you there? And I start screaming. You know, me and her are not really all that cool. Like to this day, like we're friends on Facebook. We patched whatever it was up. Um, like I told y'all, I used to be like a big friend on birthdays and it just so happened that I was not there for her birthday. It was like some, some huge mix up and she thought I knew about it. I didn't know about it, but anyway, so we're not as close as we used to be. I'm telling y'all like friends be cool off of me when it comes to their birthdays. I'm telling you, cause I'd be going all out for the birthdays. Um, but I was screaming and she was like, are you okay? What's wrong? What's wrong? I was like, my car, I, I like, I crashed my car. I told on my car, I'm upside down. I take the seatbelt off and I like, um, kind of like hop down cause I'm upside down. I kick the door open, get out of the car 
and I'm standing there looking at the car upside down. I check myself, no scratches. No, it just, it just gives me chills every time I think about like no scratches, not hurt at all. So of course I get on the phone, you know, I'm calling my grandparents at the time. This is my grandpa's car that no one in the family wanted me to have. Cause it, I was really like the family screw up. Right. And so nobody wanted me to have this car. He has pretty much given me this car to do with as I want. And I really was out here just spoiled, like just treating the car as my own. And, um, oh, I remember just crying to him. Like, I'm so sorry. Like I ruined your car. I'm so sorry. And you know, when it comes to my papa, it just makes me so emotional because he like the way he forgives, at least with me, I, you know, people have had their stuff with him. I'm sure in my family, but at least with me, it's like, he's always given this olive branch. That's just like, no matter what you do, I'm not gonna Woo. Mm. So when you see that, it makes you want to be that for other people, right? Um, so I say all that to say when that happened, I realized like, okay, there's there's a bigger calling on my life. The way that God saved me through something that was clearly my fault. No one hit me, no one, no one told me, kept me from getting sleep. No one said like, you don't have nowhere to stay here in Huntington Beach where you could get here early enough to get up and go to the airport at a decent time and get enough sleep. Like it was all your fault. And God still saw fit to save you from this where you had not one scratch. When I tell y'all, I got on the plane, took my stuff, grandparents handled everything, um, took a shower that night because I was flying to my mom's took a shower that night and had glass like in my hair it just it just amazes me right and that's not the only situation where God just popped up with his favor on my life and I just was like I, I just I don't deserve I don't deserve I do not deserve I do not deserve, right? Um, so when we talk about relationship, like the way that I feel about God, nobody, nobody could ever match what he has saved me from. The routes that I could have went down where he was just like, I'm gonna snatch you up out of this or I'm gonna let you get in just enough to realize I'm not playing. And that's because of a relationship. Because of that relationship, I love him for that. Because of the religion, I did not understand him for it. I was upset about it. So now as an adult, you know, people try to condemn you if you don't go to church every Sunday. And that just lets me know whatever wavelength you're on, it's not deep enough for me. You have to understand that when you have a relationship, it's not about the religious practices. It's not, they're nice. They help to stabilize you. And I'm sure whatever religion you are, you, you, you become respected, disciplined, and, um, your faith grows because of those religious acts. I don't doubt them at all. And I'm still a Christian, but I'm non-denominational because I honestly believe that the sole reason for me accepting Christ into my life is to save people around me. And to do that, it's not to condemn them because they did not pay their tithes. It's not to condemn. That's the pastor's job, honestly. I understand that people got a church. The church is a business. People got to do what they got to do. But when you're talking to someone who no longer believes in God because they've gotten so many people taken away from them, they've been through so much hurt. The thing that is going to help you relate to them is discussing your relationship. They don't want to hear nothing about that religious stuff. They don't. They don't, because how are you going to tell someone who has lost everyone in their life that, well, God still loves you and you, you should pay your tithes. No, your relationship is what's going to, what is, what's going to bring those soul ties. It just is. And that's with anything. It's with anything. 
um, I always feel like it's important for me to talk about this because a lot of people feel like, oh, as a Christian, you can't do this as a Christian, you can't do that, which is why I feel like Christians are not monolithic. And when we realize that our business, the business that we should be about is just bringing souls to Christ and love. And that is it. All these other semantics and all these other things that we add that it's not our place to add. If you are the pastor, if you are the leader of a, um, a flock, a shepherd of the, of the flock, right? <laughs> um, you know, it's your job to enforce all those things because that's the calling that God has put on your life. That's the anointing that you have. But as soon as you fall into this lane of, you know, a lot of Christians, they meet someone who says, you know, I don't believe in God. And so they take it as two challenges. Um, either, okay, God, this is the devil. I'm going to distance myself. Or they say, um, I'm going to try to convert you and bring you to Christ. Um, I don't really have a problem with people bringing others to Christ, but I feel like there's a way don't just bring the person to church and just badger them down with their lifestyle and saying, you ain't doing right. And you're going to hell and you better hurry up and repent and and come to God. That is not how you do it. You wait for people. You, first of all, you show what it is you're trying to promote with your walk. That's one. That's number one. Number two when that person is ready to come to you or anytime they speak to you about problems or anything, you always connect it to your relationship. And I do that. I say, you know, I don't know how I've been able to, to make all these things work. God really has favor on my life. It is because my relationship is because I have daily, I'm sorry, like six, seven times throughout the day talks with God where I'm just like, you know, God, I don't really know how to do this. I don't really know why you want me to do it. But if you could help me out with this thing right here, and, you know, forgive me for any of the any of the crazy things I'm about to do while while we're going through it. It's talks like that. Where you really establish a relationship. Um, Because, you know, people think God is just like this big voice in the sky because of the way that Hollywood has made it seem or that it's Morgan Freeman or somebody else in the sky. And it's just not that. It's just not that Um, there's so many things that we could get into as far as church and why church goes the way it goes. Like I said, um, I grew up with ministers in my family in part one. I think I said that I grew up with ministers in my family. Um, My family has been a part of one church for years, all my life. Um, So I've seen behind the scenes of a church. I've been in multiple choirs. I've led choirs. I've, um, you know, been part of praise dances and praise teams and step teams and, and all kind of stuff. And I love church. I do. I love the whole experience. I love the whole feel good part of church. I love, you know, I love to talk about the church as far as jokes and being funny because there's a lot of humor in the church. Um, but I also understand the ridicule that comes from the church and it hurts my heart. But when I find someone or I meet someone who won't go because of that, I can relate because I've been a person in a new church getting judged and the person don't even know I grew up in church. So why are you looking at me? Who are we looking at like that? You looking at me like (laughs) that type of stuff right there. I know what it's like. So that's why it's so important to have religion, because if the church was to burn down or something happened to the church, your religion should still be intact. Honestly. Honestly. Okay, so I didn't want to come before you long. What does Kev on stage say? I'm not here for a. I'm not here for a long time, but I'm here for a good time. It's something like that. Something like that. Right. Um, but this was the part two where we talk about relationship versus religion. Um, if you are a person out there who has questions about Christianity, who has questions about questions about the Bible, you know, as black people, we're learning more and more. Um, I think a lot of us are starting to question like the Bible as far as, you know, context and perspective because the way it was taught to us is different than 
how we're viewing it now. And, you know, people add the Bible where it's convenient for them and how it fits in their life. And that's the good thing about verses. You can kind of switch them and change them and, and mold them into your situations that you're going through in life. But because of that, that's why there's disbelief. Um, so I don't really have all the answers. I just know that my relationship that I've worked hard on, you know, having a prayer journal, um, taking the time to just turn everything off and just talk to him. And it really does feel like you're just talking to yourself, but you make this habit of just talking and then you start listening to what you're saying. And then you start seeking the voice of God, seeking the face of God. And he comes in there and you'll hear him when you least expect it, honestly, but you cannot be clouded by all these religious things going on. It's just not going to help you. So if you're having issues with your religion, the biggest thing to do is decrease the religion, increase the relationship, come back to the religion because the religion cannot do anything for you. I'm, I'm convinced when we get to heaven, if that's what you believe, when we get to heaven, they're not going to be saying Christians go over there, Protestants go over there, Catholics over there. Um, you know, they, they're not just, they're just not going to be doing that. They're just not. They're just not going to be doing that. I'm Camaray, the host of this podcast, hashtag JTFIO, or just trying to figure it out on this brand, Camaray Music TV. Make sure you subscribe, download, follow, share, like, comment, do all of the things. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.